Hi everyone, this is Dr. Lanise coming to you again for my Monday Medical Minutes where I want to talk to you mom and dad, I want to talk to parents about what to expect when the unexpected happens and your baby is admitted to the NICU. I take care of sick babies for a living and I know that parents have lots of questions and it can be overwhelming to hear all of this information when it happens. So I want to have these videos to kind of give you some more information. I did a video last week talking about chorioamnionitis, so if you didn't see it, please check it out. But this week, I want to talk to you about something called TTN or transient tachypnea of the newborn. So I'm sure you're wondering, what is that? So essentially, this just means after delivery, your baby may have some difficulty breathing and may need some extra help or support. So I know that this sounds very scary, but the good news is this is something that we can absolutely treat and it's called transient because it's short lived. It usually resolves within a few hours. Okay. So how long exactly? Sometimes the breathing can get better within six hours and sometimes it takes a full day up to 24 hours. It can last longer than that, but for most of the babies, again, this is kind of a short-lived process. So the next thing I wanna to touch on is, well, what causes this? What do, why does this happen? And the reason why, baby lives inside mom in the uterus and at that time, the lungs are filled with fluid, so the baby's not using the lungs to breathe. After delivery, the lungs fill up with air and then your baby starts breathing. So as it gets close to your due date around the time to deliver, part of the natural process is that this fluid that's in the baby's lungs will get absorbed. As labor continues, uh, as you're getting again closer to the time of delivery, and mom's in the hospital and she's laboring, as the baby moves down the birth canal, there will be some compression to the chest or squeezing of the chest that also helps to expel some of that fluid. Finally, when baby comes out, they may cough and start crying. All of that helps to clear some more fluid and then they kind of take that nice first deep breath and then the lungs will fill up with air. However, for some babies, they don't, for whatever reason, clear as much of this fluid and then having that extra fluid causes them to have a harder time or a difficult time breathing. So how do we know that the baby's having a hard time. There's different signs that let us know that. One is that we look at the baby, they may be pale and their face or look blue around the lips. We call this cyanosis. We may look in the baby's face and we see that the nostrils are kind of going up and down. We call that nasal flaring. Something else that we might notice is the baby might be making a moaning or a groaning sound. We call that grunting. You would just notice by looking at the baby that the baby's you know, breathing very fast. You can see that their chest is going up and down very quickly and it almost looks like the baby's getting tired, right? So we say the baby's working hard to breathe, okay? That's another sign that we look for. Something else that we might notice as we're watching the baby breathe is if you look where the ribs are, it almost looks like the skin in between the ribs is getting sucked in, okay? And we also have another term for that called retractions. You don't have to remember all of the medical terms, but these are just explanations of things that we look for to that let us know that your baby is having a hard time breathing. When that happens and when we see this, what we're gonna do is give the baby support. So one of the things you might notice that we do is we take kind of a long tube or a catheter and we will put it down the baby's nose or put it down the baby's mouth. And that just helps us, uh, it's connected to some suction and that way we can suck out some extra fluid so we could sort of clear up the, the nasal passages and we can kind of clear the, th the throat um, and help the baby to breathe more comfortably. And we kind of put that, that catheter even down further to kind of suction out the tummy as well and take out any of that extra fluid that the baby may have swallowed. Another thing that you'll see us do is kind of put on something that looks like a piece of tape, okay, around the baby's hand or wrist, around the, the feet. And this is called a pulse ox and it lets us know what your baby's oxygen saturation is and that's important because it lets us know if your baby needs oxygen. So if it's low and we see that your baby's not kind of getting enough oxygen, then we'll give the baby support. We'll give the baby some oxygen. So again, you might see us pull another long tube, kind of plastic tube, and um, this is what we call blow-by oxygen. And essentially, it's connected to um, an oxygen tank and kind of blows out air over the baby's face. You might see us have the tube and kind of cupping over the baby's face to provide that oxygen to watch and see if the baby's going to sort of bring their oxygen saturations up to where we need it to be for the baby to breathe well and to breathe comfortably. Now, if we start to see some of these um, signs that I mentioned before, the grunting, the, the, the very fast breathing, the sucking in between the ribs of the retractions, uh, these are signs that your baby needs more support than just oxygen. So in that case, you'll see us put a mask over the baby's face and covering over the nose and over the mouth. And this allows us to give something called CPAP. 
and you can see that we like abbreviation. So CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. Okay, you don't have to, again, remember those terms, but that basically means it allows us to give a flow of air some pressure into the lungs to help keep the lungs open so that the baby can breathe more comfortably. So we will do all of those things. However, if we notice we're over five minutes of life, we're 10 minutes of life, we're still needing to give your baby breathing support. At this time, we'll let you know, you know what, your baby needs more support. Uh, this is not gonna get better in kind of just a few minutes. So we need to admit the baby to the NICU so that we can continue giving that breathing support until all the fluid that's in the lungs gets absorbed and the baby can breathe more comfortably. So we're still gonna do all those things that you're expecting. We're gonna weigh the baby, try the baby, put the hat on, wrap the baby in the blanket. We're gonna bring the baby over to you so that you know mom and dad that you can get a chance to see the baby kiss the baby all those things then we're going to want to take the baby down to the NICU to get the baby settled so what does that mean? What are we gonna do in the NICU? So we're gonna, of course, continue that breathing support. There's different types of support that are used at different hospitals, but we talked about CPAP. So if we're keeping the baby on CPAP, what you might see is, um, we call like a nasal cannula or prongs that kind of go into the baby's nose to provide that oxygen. Or you may see a little mask that we put over the baby's nose, again, to give that pressure, that flow of air to help keep the lungs open. We're gonna continue that, that piece of tape around the hand or the foot called the pulse ox so that we can keep monitoring the baby's oxygen saturations. Then you'll also see us um, put things on the baby's chest and tummy that we call leads that look like little stickers. And that allows us to put, you know, babies heart rate and how their respiratory rate, how fast they're breathing up on the monitor, monitor so that we can continue to watch that as well. The other thing that we're gonna have to do is put in an IV to give your baby fluids. And you might be wondering, well, why is that? When babies are breathing fast like this and having trouble and need breathing support, it's not safe to feed them. And the reason is they may choke on that and that, that formula or that breast milk may go down the windpipe into the airway and get into the lungs and cause more problems. So we give the baby uh, an IV to give the baby fluids. So it'll be a small stick in your baby's hands or feet or legs in order for us to put in this small catheter so that we'll be able to give your baby fluids. In the fluids, it will have sugar, electrolytes, sometimes protein, basically everything that your baby needs, okay, um, to make sure that they're doing well from a nutrition standpoint until they are ready to feed. We're also going to need to do some other labs and tests. One of those things will be a chest x-ray where we basically take a picture of the chest so that we can look in the lungs and confirm our diagnosis, confirm that we think that this is really TTN and the sign of that on the x-rays that we'll see fluid in the lungs, okay? And we also want to make sure that there's nothing that looks like a pneumonia or a sign of infection or anything else that could explain why the baby might be having trouble breathing. We'll also do something that's called a blood gas. It gives us a pH and many different numbers that just lets us know how well the baby is breathing and to make sure that we are giving baby enough support to breathe comfortably. We also will take some blood to send for something called a CBC where we look at a white blood cell count which is basically a marker for infection. We worry if it's very high or very low that there may be infection somewhere. We will also send off some blood for culture where some of the baby's blood goes into a bottle, it goes down to the lab, they put it in a machine, and then they basically watch it for the next two days to look and see if there's any bacteria growing in there. Again, which just lets us know if there's any signs of infection. Typically, if your baby's uh, breathing difficulty is just due to that TTN, due to having the fluid in the lungs, then it's usually not associated with infection. But again, babies can present with breathing trouble for many different reasons, so we wanna make sure that we have eliminated all these other factors Factors, which is why we still do these extra tests. Okay, so you probably are wondering, okay, so I know what's going to happen when my baby's in the NICU. I know what's going on, but when will my baby go home? Okay, so when your baby comes off of the CPAP, comes off of breathing support, and is breathing comfortably without any of those signs that let us know there's trouble breathing, like the nasal flaring or the rapid breathing or the grunting the retractions that we talked about, um, then your baby is close to going home. If we were able to stop the IV fluids and your baby's breastfeeding well or bottle feeding well, then these are signs that you're close. Typically, we like to watch the baby for a full day, full 24 hours off of breathing support and off of IV fluids to make sure that your baby is really ready to go home, okay? So if 
you delivered um, by C-section. And so, you know, mom, you're going home in three days and your baby's better, you know, again, in a day, because most babies are better in a day, then your baby will be able to go back to the nursery and stay with you until you go home. If baby has to be with us for longer, or if it was a vaginal delivery, then most likely your baby's gonna leave from the NICU. But again, they're off a full day, off of fluids, and off of the breathing support and not having any issues. That's when you know it's time to send your baby home. So. Parents usually also want to know, what does this mean? This was very scary. We're glad baby's better, but what does this mean for the future? Okay, TTN, again, is a short-lived process. This fluid that's in the lungs, you don't have to keep checking it. We don't have to monitor it. We know that by natural process of the body, this is going to get absorbed, okay? So once baby comes off of breathing support and is doing well, then we know that this is no longer an issue, okay? Again, no concern for infection if all the labs and testings are negative. So this does not put your baby at increased risk to get in infection or to get sick later on and this does not affect impact your baby's breathing at all later on in life and should not affect your growth and development if this is simply just due to TTN okay so I hope I know this is a lot of information but I just want to make sure that you guys are informed so I hope that you enjoyed this talk today please leave the comments below and I will try to answer your questions so once again this is Dr. Lanise and I'm coming to you with my Monday medical minutes please go to my Facebook page please like me to stay in touch and to get more information. So thank you for tuning in. Bye.